Hey guys, uh, it's Lucid. Welcome back. Uh, we're jumping back into our game. I think it's turn 49. Uh, so I got three turns to do. Hopefully we'll get them all in this episode. Because, um, you know, we're still kind of, since our turn eight rush of somebody, we've been sitting idle for like 30 turns. Not really. I mean, we did have our our war with um, with Arcadia for a while. Uh, we found a farm of plenty, whoop de doo but a forest of delights is pretty good. I can't remember if it's one or two. Let's go check. Two, sounds good. Um, so our nature income's starting to kind of go up. It's been pretty piddly compared to Earth. Uh, and then that's basically that. We're moving some troops around. We've got a thug, we're sending in sweaty man dance. So he's going to go do some work for us underwater. We haven't really given him other uh, weapons. I think if we give him a, a weapon, it gets rid of, yeah. What, it gets rid of two attacks. Right now he's got crush and kick, which we might as well just keep. Uh, we could put an item on him, but, you know, it's not really going to do much better. Anyway, we're sending him underwater. Hopefully take this. And uh, deciding who to go on. Right now I'm pooling troops kind of towards this border. But from this border, I can also attack this throne. Um, but I'm not sure. I really have to figure out what we're going to do. Because on one hand, I kind of want to attack these guys who are now really big. On the other hand, I kind of want to attack these guys. Um, so anyway, we'll, we'll figure out what to do. I'm just not sure what that's going to be at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Um... In terms of research, we are one turn away from our fateful construction nine, and we've saved up some earth gems, but not a ton. Uh, we're gonna spend those next turn. We'll go ahead and pu pull up next turn. Um, turn 48, 48, as they say. Um, oh, you know, there was some other shit I didn't mention that is kind of cool, because I'd been building up for it. Um, it's kind of hard to remember exactly what to cover, like spell casting and stuff, but there's some important spell casting. Um, one of the things here is that uh, we have this guy underwater, and he is our twice death empowered termina with twice born on. We couldn't take the boots off of him because this guy doesn't have feet. He has feet on land, but I forgot that his feet went away. So I was planning on handing the feet to this guy, but really. I should have sent a normal... Actually, I don't know what I would have done. Anyway, we're losing the boots. But that was the only thing else I really wanted to show you. Coming back down, turn 48. Not our current turn. Current turn is turn 49. Um, yeah, so he gets drowned and he comes back as a terminal white. A or wraith. And uh, pretty badass. So death 4. 120 hit points, size 6. No protection, but um, I think the best thing for this guy is probably throw on uh, either the trample boots. Trample boots are an option. Because uh, trample with soul vortex, pretty good. Um, though potentially we could also throw on stone boots if we're fighting things with magic weapons. Uh, because this guy with stone boots will murder a lot of stuff. Soul Vortex, maybe Dancing Shield, potentially. Um, and then here, uh, Amulet of Anti-Magic. And that will do some pretty serious work. Now, ideally, I empower him in air, and he can also do my air death things that I need him to do. Uh, and Cloud Trap bees on people. But that would require a lot of air gems. I think we're getting near the point. I'm at 1,600 research a turn, which is way more than I really thought this nation could get to. But through the power of boosters, we've kind of done it. Um, kind of need to organize my inventory. But uh, I think we're going to turn off alcohol production. And we're going to start turning on the gear production with the whatever hammers I do have. <sighs> Uh, we're empowering this guy in water uh, so that I can do Rune Smashers. Rune Smashers are going to be important for a few things. Uh, one, of if I do um, like Wind of Death 
spam a second, which is one of the things this guy might do. Uh, a second, and most importantly, is if I get the uh, turn the Mew Atlas Dominator, which is the one that casts Mass Enslave at the first turn of combat. Um, one thing I figured out about that, though, I was thinking I could really stack up um, the uh, the magic penetration items, but he does not have... I can't do Eye of the Void. He does not have any eyes. It is an eyeless being, and I don't know if that... Some of the things I wonder... Um, if Aether Nomad intentionally thought about when he made this. Because that's an almost all the Mew Atlases, I think, have eyes. I think. Like, my god has eyes. Has an eye. But but this guy doesn't. And I don't know if it was potent, uh, you know, specifically to avoid that one uh, that one thing. I, and also, oh, I need to remember for my current turn. He's making a Bloodstone. I don't know if I'm making another artifact, but anyway. One of the things I kind of want is this one, but this also requires an eye. Um, so I can't do this one. And there's really not a lot of other magic penetration items that we could put on him. Um, it's really the Rune Smasher, and then we can do uh, this one, which is penetration plus one. And then there's a head think that we can put on the Ion Stones. But this only goes on a few guys and doesn't go on them. So, yeah, there's not much we're going to be able to actually stick this on here. Or we're not going to be able to stick on them. But importantly, we have finished Construction 9. And what that means is uh, we are going to be able to do budget Mew Atlases. So it's going to be completely random, but it'll make it fun, uh, and we'll see which ones we get. And so I'm casting it this turn, and fortunately for you, uh, we had um, somebody go out of town. So we had to pause the game between this turn and the next for like a week. Um, and so I had to wait for like a week to see what, which ones we were actually going to get. But for you, it will happen just in a moment. Um, so here we are doing Shape Mew Atlas, and over here we are doing... Are we doing it here? Here we're doing Shape New Atlas. So we're doing it here and here. Um, so we'll see. The one I want to get most is the Alteration one. Because once I get the Alteration one, I can basically... I don't think anybody will have an army as strong as mine. There's a few things I could kind of get fucked with. But not really. Not really. Um, but yeah, we'll have to we'll, very soon, and we're going to go ahead and jump to next turn, because that's basically what's going, oh, we had a dance, well, I'll just show you Sweaty Man Dance coming and wreck people. Yeah, protection, not horrible, uh, with Berserk. Just punching his way to victory. Okay, very satisfying. He's going to move back. Um, but yeah, we'll take that little tiny bit of income. Um, we're running around trying to get uh, all of our eggs back, but I, we might have a slight over... Well, we do. Uh, this one... The thing is... I didn't write down what turn the eggs came in, so I don't really know how close we're cutting it, but I, we got two of these uh, recently, but I didn't really have them on time. I probably, one of the guys I did the the Sister G of Rebirth earlier, I probably should have done into to one of these. And I might even do another one soon. We're going to go ahead and pull up my current turn. Uh, and I know we're kind of skimming through it, but that's, we're just, when we're not at war, there's not a ton to talk about. We've got a lot of angel eggs ready to go, guys. A lot. Four here. One of the things we have to do is figure out what we're going to do. 
And then here we've got three ready to go. Four, holy shit. That's a lot. So uh, the way this works is we can do no more than five Sister G's of Rebirth. We can't have more than five in progress at a time. So we'll do them and then we'll have a lot come out. And that, we're getting to the point where I actually need to write down how many we're doing and then how many I find. Um, and I think we're going to do five and then I'm going to have to keep like a ledger of this. And it's going to be annoying, but I have to do it. And it's going to be like a one in one out thing. So I'll do five in and then whenever an event spawns, it gives me one. I'll have to subtract one from the ledger and that will let me know how many more I can cast. And I'll, I'll probably put it on like a little piece of paper uh, on my right next to my computer or something. But without that, we're not really going to know. Uh, because on one hand, you could just say, you know, like the normal cycle, there's a cycle and we're only going to do five in a cycle. But the thing is, a lot of these are going to respawn before that cycle uh, finishes, if you know what I mean. So uh, potentially you can have multiple castings. Like I could potentially even have, within one cycle, I could probably even have up to like 10 angel egg things, which would mean this is going to scale like crazy. And I like scaling like crazy. Um, what else has happened? We have finished um, Alt 5, and we are making our way to Alt 6. Now Alt 6 is going to give us uh, one thing we definitely, definitely need, which is going to be the Termina Beholders. Um, and these are the ones who do darkness and drain life, both of which are phenomenal. This is excellent anti-thug. Um, and then uh, darkness obviously is the shit. I don't know if it's going to, I'm thinking now our next war is gonna be these guys. So there, and it may be this turn, we have to end our nap, but I want to get, Arcadia is really between a rock and a hard place. This is cracked now. I think I do end it this turn. But then if he takes these thrones from me, then we all lose the game, basically. Because right now, um, I haven't really been covering these, but... Oh, man. Would I like that throne? Oh, my God. Would I like that one? Plus three defense on all my troops? Holy shit. Give me a Hydromancer? Oh, man. That would be like... If that were this throne, I would have had a war to get this one. As it stands, it's going to be tough. So he's got this one, he's got this one, he's got this one, I think. He's got this one. That's five. I think I have to... Yeah, we've got we've to go ahead and make our move. So I think we're going to go ahead and send our message to him. Uh, let's go ahead and... Oh, I didn't show you what uh, guys we got, which is going to be important for all this. But anyway, turn 49. Greetings, death lovers. Uh, we regret to inform you that you have too many thrones and the peoples and the feet, excuse me, very rude. The feats of you are growing restless and concerned. As such, we must end our nap three so that um, we might prevent you running away with victory. Uh, it's turn 49. You will receive this on turn uh, 50. We can issue hostile orders if it comes to that on turn 50. I'm sorry, yeah, 52, because it's going to be 49 plus 3 which can be received 
on turn 53. Okay, so this is going to be an end to the boring part. Um, with much hesitancy, not really. This is, uh, wait, he's your daddy. Now, there, there are some mistakes we made in this message. One, as you can see, I typed the word you up here a couple times, which we need to go remedy immediately. We're just going to make this confusing. By every time we say we, we're going to put you because we're the nation of you, and then every time that we're talking about them, we're going to put you. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> okay, you regrets to inform you that you have too many... <laughs> that you have too many thrones and the feats of you are growing restless and concerned. As such, you must end our nap three so that you might prevent you from running away. <laughs> oh God, fuck. Okay, let me get this out of my sight. Okay. Um, so who did we get? We cast it twice. Um, I also empowered this guy in death again. I was really hesitant about this, but I was like, like, what's the first death thing we're going to get? It's going to be, I'm going to do a pass, and we're going to get life after death here. I mean, I'm sorry. We're going to get, um, sorry, I got distracted. Hmm, that's a scary dude. Um... What was I saying? Oh, we empowered him in death because I need to be death five to do Lichcraft. And I can give this guy an arm, but he only has one arm. And with I think this was a change they made in the patch recently. But yeah, he can't wear a skull staff anymore. So for him to get liches, which is what I want to get, we just had to suck it up and empower him in death. And that sucks. But that's also the way things are going to be right now. Um... Yeah. Now, in the meantime, before I get Lichcraft, because it's going to be a while, he can run around with my army. Now, who did I get? Okay. The first guy I got, Shape Mew Atlas, we get this guy. This is the enchantment one. So, in some ways, this isn't great, because I was going to go after Alt 8 or 9. No, after Alt 9, I was going to go get this guy anyway. Um, or go, I was going to go enchantment eight. So if this was the one I was missing to get the set, this is a little bit kind of wasteful, but that's okay. Um, Dominion Spreader one, holy five, which means he can do AOE one soul slay, which is nice, but not phenomenal. Well, it's actually, and he can cast it twice per round. So it's actually pretty good. Um, he would kind of like to have a, uh, uh, a rune smasher so we'll have to see if we can get him one i've made these we're gonna have to make more rings of warning actually i forgot because i didn't oh i meant i didn't mention this look at look at the unrest here in my blood hunting sites so the patch hit and one of the things they changed in the patch was undisciplined units um undisciplined units have half of their patrol strength and unfortunately, what this means is because these guys have a minus one patrol malice, the way order of operations works is it takes their, let's say before they had like a 1.3 patrol strength, and then they had a minus one, so their effective patrol strength was like 0.3. Well, now it does 1.3 divided by two, so now it's 0.7 or whatever, and uh, then it subtracts one from that, so we get negative three patrol strength. Uh, this also affects Maniads in vanilla. What this means is they're actually bad, so bad at patrolling, they don't. Even, not only do they not count, but if you have other people patrolling, they will decrease the effectiveness of those people patrolling. 
So the only thing these guys are fucking good for is ruined. So that was a really shitty mid-game patch. And it took me a while to figure it out, because I realized there was a debuff to them, but I thought, like, oh, they're just going to be not as good. No, no, no. They're not, like, half as good at patrolling. They're infinitely worse at patrolling. They are horrible at fucking patrolling. So um, these big feet are actually kind of okay. So what I need to do is put only big feet in here, have these guys patrol. Everybody else can just chill the fuck out. And then... Yeah. Meanwhile, I have to get other patrollers, which we're going to use wolves and stuff because I have the soul stone thing. I need to figure out. Let's talk about I'm not going to play the turnout with you because it's going to take a long time, but uh, there's some things we'll probably do. We're going to figure out what we're going to do with the angel eggs together. Um, we're going to go ahead and start thinking about army composition for our first war. Um, and we'll start beginning. We'll talk about just basic troop logistics, but that's about it. So anyway, I think that's it um, for what we're going to cover. Now, the other new atlas I got was this guy. And this is the atlas one. Um, I mean, the alteration one. And he's the shit. Uh, he's got really good paths, obviously. He's got um, this, which casts uh, Gaia's Blessing at the start of combat. And... Um, he will cast uh, Army of Gold once per combat. Though it doesn't say here, I'm, I'm quite sure he will. Potentially with this air path, he can also do Fog Warriors. So if he does Gaia's Blessing, Army of Gold, and Fog Warriors... You know, good luck killing him. The only thing I'm a little worried about... Only thing I'm a little worried about... Well, I, I just don't want him to die. Like assassins, or some way they snipe him. Kind of tempted to try to do... Um... Could also potentially empower this guy. Um. Anyway, we're gonna try to not sit here. I'll do some. I'll save some of the real abstract brainstorming for off screen. But um. Yeah, I I want to give this guy a kit and potentially a ring of returning, even though I can't make a ring of returning. But I want to give him some kit where I'm not really worried about him getting sniped. Uh, the other, I might give him flying boots so that if the battle is lost, he'll fly away. That would be good. Um, and then maybe give him like a shield and then uh, a weapon here. Problem with Ring of Returning, if he gets hit by something like Seeking Arrow, it can take him out of a fight and then I lose my whole army. So I don't really want to do Ring of Returning. But I think... Flight is one of the things. The other thing, and probably the shield I'll put on will probably be the crystal shield. Um, and then I might do a crystal matrix. And then I might do... This might be a little bit later, though, because if I get Thalm 4, uh, I can get these encanters for only five gems, and they're going to serve as slaves, and that will allow this guy to do all the air buffs. So he can do mass flight... Uh, fog Warriors, which I will have all of that for very shortly. I already have Mass Flight. I don't have Fog Warriors yet. Um, so anyway, I've got to figure that out. I think it may be worth actually doing like a little research detour and saying, hey, we'll get Alt-6 because I need Darkness. Then we'll get Thumb-6 because I want to get Encanters. And then we'll get Blood-6. Then we'll get Alt-9. Because it's going to be a slog till alt 9. And 6s aren't very hard to pick up, especially when I'm already at 4. Um, but yeah, this guy, if he does all those four things, that's going to be huge. And th then it will definitely be worth protecting him. Um, if we get assassinated... His MR is actually pretty good. 
I think we want flying boots, which he probably needs to go ahead and forge for himself. See, earth gems are more valuable. I think I would rather make these, even though this is kind of cheap. I think we'll do the air ones. God, he's a good leader too. Um. I'm feeling pretty confident I can kill, deal with these guys with super combatants. If he brings a lot of astral mages, we'll be in trouble, but I don't really feel like he's at that point. I'm pretty sure these guys can turn on them too, but they'll probably take this throne. Anyway, I think this is the play. If I get this guy and like one or both two of his capitals, and these other guys turn on him and he gets pushed back, then I can turn on somebody else and I'll be okay. Like either Arcadian take Caleb. Or Thalamon think at both of these. I know that seems like very ambitious, but I think that's going to be my best shot at winning. Not to say it will definitely happen. Um, what are we good for events? Oh, we got an angel egg that joined us. So that's that. I don't have enough right now to cast... Well, there, okay, so we've talked about... I actually got the two best um, U Atlases, really. Because I got this guy, um, who I can give... these idiots too. I kind of wonder, these guys are, how good are they at patrolling? Not very good. I think we can take these guys and roll them out over this way. I need to let Thalamantha know that I'm not going to attack him. And if I'm going to go into war with these guys, I'm going to suggest we have a nap. Um, yeah. The other thing I need to do is I need to make sure I have like a complete kit of all the important spellcasters uh, in this army over here. So, for example, I'm going to need a Meditator. But I think the Meditators I want to get... Are they enchantment? I don't have any... But he can't go all the way. Oh... <sighs> Meditators are enchantment six, so sixteen, whatever. Uh, we've used that enchantment side enough for the high priests. We're gonna go ahead and just get a meditator here. Um, and I don't want to cannibalize too much from my southern armies because it's our, I'm already gonna kind of not be having mu atlases with them, but. Uh, here, we'll go ahead and get a meditator over this way. And that will be pretty important. The other thing we're going to need to have is a minesmith. Which here I can, we do have, we're going to go ahead and get a minesmith over on this one. And then he can haul ass up here. Um... And take this off. So the key things I'm going to need, I'm going to probably also need a couple more of the strength guys. 
which are also enchantment. Three more of them will probably be good. And then that army will be damn near unkillable. The only thing I'm going to need is Thom 6 and get two of those guys. And then I'm going to need this Earth Astral cross path. So uh, I don't want to put Astral in him because he's going to be in combat. He can get magic dueled. I don't want to put him on my god because he has a minus two magic malice. I don't want to put it on this guy. Astral Death's not super awesome for me. I mean, Astral Blood isn't bad. Mm. So anyway, I'm going to figure that out offline. But that's one of the things we're going to need. The other thing I have to figure out is what artifact I make this turn, if I do make one. Oh, one of the reasons I might have been wanting to do this. Um, this would not be bad. I don't really have a reanimator, but... Oh man, this would be really good. Life after death on my whole army. Seems really good. Yeah, there's no way I can not forge that. Um, potentially too, I can take my washed up mages and if they die, like these, like this guy, he can come with. I kind of need to bring him with anyway. I need some blimey cows. Do I have any of those over here? No, we're going to need some of our bags of wine, though. I don't have... Oh, my lab burnt down. I haven't been able to rebuild it yet because I'm too poor. Here we've got a bunch of limey cows. I think we're going to let this chill out. I think we'll have this guy kind of slowly blood hunt it down, but this is going to murder the population. This will be... I think everyone you kill is 10, so I think I'd lose like a thousand population if I destroy it all normally. But it's going to go down on its own over the course of a few turns. I definitely want to get all of the stone pushers out. I don't know where I... I think I have them all over here. Yeah. Hell yeah. This is going to be a scary fucking army. I need more cows, though. That's really it. Um, this guy needs a hammer. And he needs to make himself a water bracelet. Then he can do a rune smasher. So we've got the makings. We've got part of our army who's going to slow walk up this way and then join. Uh, the things we have left, once I get all six, we're going to get this guy, the uh, Beholder. Then we'll have these guys. Once I get all nine, I'll get two encanters. I have to figure out somebody to empower. I kind of want to do these guys because they're master ritualists. Um... Which is good and all. I mean, it means with the hat. Do they? They don't have heads. Nobody has heads, please. We don't need head slots. Um.
This guy's all diseased up. The other thing I have to do is I need to figure out, uh, I mean, I'm out of diseases to burn. So I have to figure out more people with diseases or I have to set up a starvation camp to, to keep fueling my death gems. These guys have probably already paid for themselves, except earth gems are more valuable than death. So that's something I'm going to figure out offline. Um, but I'm probably, we're probably going to turn this into a starvation camp and then I'm going to park them there. Uh, Arcadia is in a bit of an interesting situation because they're getting attacked by Nabatum. And Nabatum has quite a few thrones, as I mentioned. But this really is weakening the Arcadia, and they're also getting attacked by um, Relay. I'm inclined to go and jump on them and get a bunch of land. But uh, my appreciation is they still have pretty big armies. So I would actually rather, I think, attack Nabatum. And this is going to prevent, especially if I can get a nap with these guys, which I don't think will be very hard. Um, that will allow me to basically have a one-on-one, -on -one, except these guys are going to be distracted, which I think that's going to be about as good as I could get for outcomes in the game. Um... So there's that. Okay, we've talked about uh, army composition. We've got a bunch, basically it's gonna be a bunch of these guys. One thing I might do, we haven't talked about angel eggs so that much. So three of you guys are going to do Sister G's of Rebirth. You, I think, are going to do a Sister G of Flesh. That is going to give me an army of 75 dudes. Which will give some nice kind of meat for my chaffy armies. Um, over here, we've got a fair amount of guys. Now, I can only do two Sister G's of Rebirth here. So, I think we're going to do... Two Sister G's of Rebirth. I do not want to be... I don't want to be starved, especially as we're ramping up to get more Sister G's of these uh, teleportation amulets. So we're going to go ahead and do that one. This guy is going to do a Sister G of Exaltation, which is going to increase scales everywhere, which I certainly could use some more of that right now. And then down here, wait, don't I have another one? Okay, we're gonna do a quick check real quick. We're gonna make sure all my sister G, all my red guys are casting something. This guy is vanishing because he's red, uh, but he's not in the province of the lab. Rip. So that is wasted. This guy is kind of the same deal, so it's another one wasted, which sucks. That was what I meant with uh, we didn't quite get all our little ducks in a row. I probably want to go ahead and get another one of uh, the Surreal Aberrations, too. Um, really sad letting these guys die. I would have... I mean, I don't know if I had the money, but ideally I would have built a lab. If I had more money, I probably should have, but we're poor as shit. That's probably not a great use of 70 sacreds. I guess these guys actually are probably going to run up this way. Uh, they'll blood hunt for now. So I think the other thing I'm going to do army logistics wise, I'm going to take a group of these guys. I'm not sure who I'm going to put them up. We're going to march them up to this throne. 
And then from here, they can defend one way or the other. So the thing I have to think about is if these guys do not give me a nap, that means they're planning on attacking me. And then the question is, do I get rid of this message to nab at them? And I'm not sure. I think, too, we're going to be mostly defensive on this front, and then we're going to push with, like, one Doom stack. And we'll do light rating and stuff with other stuff, but... Maybe I don't really need... What, what this, I, I really can demilitarize a lot of this. I think I can actually save a lot of these gems. I think we're going to chill out on some of these. Yeah, we don't need those guys. We're going to pull this guy. He's a meditator. We've got these guys who are disease healers. We have to find a place for them. But um, these idiots. Oh, wait, are these the strength of giants? These are strength of giants, right? Okay. I think all these guys are strength of giants casters. I right, know some of these are going to be animal ones. Sorry, the animal ones I want. I think we just pull all of these idiots. That's what I'm trying to say. Sure, we'll leave these guys here. Now, we're going to pull them. Oh man, it's going to be a slow walk out of here. How many of them can actually make it over here? Now, what is this guy? Oh, this is a Minesmith. Oh no, Solar Eclipse. He can stay down here. These other guys... Wait, what is this guy? Anti-Magic. Okay, that'll be fine. We're going to move most all these guys up here. We'll get, if things go crazy on this front, we'll make another anti-magic caster. But for now, we're going to save gems. Um, I don't remember where I made an anti-magic caster. Okay, we've got somebody here that's making one of them. Train monster. I know I have it. Somebody's doing it. Um, here we're making the Ankh. Oh, I must have been looking at the wrong site. Oh, it's here in Agartha. Okay. You know, potentially I could make some of these boosters too for blood. My blood's just in the shitter after this patch. It really pissed me off. I think that's another good reason to delay running into blood. I might just say fuck blood for now and wait for the, some of the, my unrest to come down. Um. Okay, I'm going to move those guys. So, uh, that's it. We'll keep doing Call of the Winds. I think we're going to cast that. Right now we're going to use it primarily to get my blood hunting online again. Uh, I've got wolves here, a few of them, which probably need to go move out. That's actually not that many wolves. Okay, we've got this guy... Maybe we move our blood hunting operation over here. Now these guys, when they patrol, they actually stop the other guys from working. So I just, I can't have these guys patrol anymore, which is going to be annoying. I need to go around this turn too and check to make sure nowhere do I have those guys patrolling.
Oh, it feels bad, man. So anyway, I think that is it uh, for this turn and for this episode. Uh, we are going to assemble a Doom Force the likes of which the world has never seen. I'm just kidding. It's not going to be that scary, but it's going to be kind of scary. I One thing I might add to it is I feel like I need a little bit more thug killing potential. I forget which one is the guy who does... I might need a Stonebreaker. Earthsinger. This is the guy that does... Oh, no, no. Curse of Stones. Not what I want. I might get... Um, there's one guy here who does Iron Bane, but that's not really going to be good against most of the people I'm fighting. Feels fucking bad, man. Okay, here we're going to patrol those things away. More wolves. I'm so goddamn poor. I'm really upset about... Not really upset, but I am very annoyed with the... Uh... Oh, inner sight to... Yeah, sure, why not? That's an archer. Who needs a fucking archer? We'll preach. All right, what are you... Oh, okay. And that... So anyway, I think that's it. Um, big takeaways. I'll try to get peace with these guys. We're declaring war on these guys. We're building a huge doom stack. Uh, we got, in my opinion, two of the best... Um, U atlases for our first two casts, so hopefully we get a... Uh, I want to get them all as soon as possible, but we'll see whether we're lucky or not. Um, we're not casting it again because we're too fucking poor, uh, but next turn we'll be casting it. Uh, probably. We're, we're going to prioritize probably getting the Beholder. But once we have the Beholder, we're going to take a huge army, march it up here, and go uh, cause a bunch of problems. The other thing I probably need to think about is getting these guys out of here. How many do we have? 17. I think I'm actually going to start marching these guys over there now. Do I have anybody who can lead them that I don't really particularly care about? Not really. So we've got quite a few commanders here. So, uh, oh, we've got you. Perfect. Um, and I might take this guy. Wait, did I misread? But I saw a uh, astral three or an astral four guy here. Oh yeah, I'll probably forward position him over here. I don't want these guys getting mind hunted. Uh, I also need to think about making more gear for these all my super combatants i really don't have enough gear i haven't really wanted to make hammers and without hammers i haven't really wanted to make items we'll see though uh i think i probably want to make f i don't really have f hmm. i really need another way to spin my fire gems i have one fire mage i don't even know what he's doing every turn probably will empower and fire i guess i don't know I have a bunch to figure out, but uh, that's basically it. Uh, check back in next time. We'll see what craziness fucking happened. Take care.